Zimone and Dina. Dina and Zimone, what the heck are we going to do with these two girls? These two. The bookish straight-A student and the outsider goth princess. These two got together when there was an infestation of werewolves at the University of Strixhaven, right? They were the only two who weren't fooled by their shenanigans, because werewolves make good cupcakes. What a classic romp that is. This video is going to take you to a spikier place. There are combos in this video, and it gets pretty nasty, dude. You may want to avert your eyes if such salt-inducing combos are going to offend thee. If thine eyes offend thee, pluck them out, my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment. If you're feeling like a freak on a leash, then buy me a coffee at the link in the description, buddy. And special thanks once again to the real M. Lem, Stud McMillionaire, and Tyler just out there buying me coffees. You guys are the man. But you know what? You don't have to buy me coffees. You get all this stuff for free. There's no gated content here at Better Commander, dude. All right, let's look at this black, green, and blue monstrosity. You got Zimone and Dina. It's one of each colored mana for a legendary creature. A human dryad, it's a 3-4. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. All right, that's pretty cool. And as tap, sacrifice another creature, draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process once. So that first ability would take 20 turns to drain everyone out, and you have to be drawing two cards each turn, including all your opponent's turns. So you'd have to do all that at instant speed, cantrips, etc., which are not bad in this deck. I would view that first ability as icing on the cake of a combo deck. Now I just wanted to point out the alternate art here. The alternate art is awesome. The regular art is pretty awesome too. Listen, both arts are awesome. It doesn't happen very often in Magic the Gathering. Gaze upon these beauties. Gaze upon them. The second ability there is all super gas. You have this ability to sack a creature, pop out a land. Whoa, big deal, right? Well, this ability combos with a few cards in interesting ways. All right, the main thing you need to be able to do is to untap Zimone and Dina. The best, easiest way to do this is with Retreat to Coral Helm. It's two and a blue for an enchantment. It has a landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You may untap target creature. I don't care what the rest of the card says. There aren't a ton of effects like this, so this might just be the tutor target that you need to go for. Well, 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 you need infinite lands in your hand, right? Wrong, bucko. You just need one land, what we affectionately call a bounce land. You have Golgari Rot Farm, Demir Aqueduct, and Simic Growth Chamber. These are pretty crappy lands in general in Commander, but they combo with our Commander. So they can bounce themselves right back to your hand. So you do the second ability with Dina, put out a bounce land, retreat to Coral Helm, untaps Dina, bounce the land to hand, do it all over again. But you're over there in the corner, you're saying to yourself with your little pacifier and your rattle, you're saying, Nikki G. What are we sacrificing? Well, we're sacrificing Bloodgast. So this is black black for a creature, vampire spirit, it's a 2-1. Bloodgast can't block. Bloodgast has haste as long as an opponent has 10 or less life. Whatever, we don't care about this. We want the landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Bloodgast from your graveyard to the battlefield. Bloodgast is an incredible and interesting creature because you can use graveyard tutors to get it into the yard. You don't need it in hand. It's almost better if it's in the graveyard anyway. And while there's nothing quite like the old Bloodgast, you can substitute with some cards like Oath Swarm, Vampire. There's some other cards you can cast from your graveyard as well. All right, so we have our commander. We have our three combo pieces that can generate near infinite death triggers, which can be capitalized with Zulaport, Cutthroat, or similar cards. We have near infinite draw, which is good. We have near infinite landfall, which is an interesting angle for this deck that we'll get to momentarily. But first things first, I want to plug some of my favorite cards to dig these combo pieces out of our library. Transmute. Transmute is an ability that reads, discard this card, search your library for a card with the same mana value as this card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Transmute only as a sorcery. This can be a budget alternative to cards like Demonic Tutor, Grim Tutor, and the like. Some of these cards are pretty decent on their own, though you'll rarely hard cast them. You got Muddle the Mixture. Blue Blue for an instant counter target instant or sorcery spell, Transmute for one Blue Blue. This can dig out Blood Gas, pretty good counter spell in a pinch, and there's a bunch of Transmute cards in these colors. Alright, anyways, back to Landfall. There are a bunch of cards that can benefit from Landfall. You have the Crabs, dude. You got Crabs? I know you do. Never underestimate the crabs because they're going to come out they're going to pinch you with their pincers, dude. You got Hedran Crab, you got Ruin Crab. These guys can mill your opponents. Scoot Swarm, dude. This is just a ridiculous card. Provides a sack fodder for Simone and Dina. Then you got the old Lotus Cobra. It's hiding out in the weeds. It's going to bite you with its fangs, dude. It's a fantastic card in any landfall deck. 
this card, dude. This card goes in so many decks. So you also have Tireless Provisioner combined with the above combo makes infinite mana, dude. So we have some basic combo pieces, but what are some redundant combo pieces? Well, you have the old intruder alarm, dude. These guys are storming the capital and it sets off the alarms. You know what I mean? You can't just take over the government whenever you want to. Intruder alarm is two and a blue for an enchantment. Creatures don't untap during their controllers on tap steps. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield, untap all creatures. That's the QAnon shaman going into Nancy Pelosi's office. He's untapping everybody. This can sub in for retreat to Coral Helm. This is an old card. It's in need of a reprint. Thornbite Staff is another one. If equipped to Zimone and Dina, can be your untapper when you sacrifice your Bloodgast or whatever you're sacrificing. The problem with this card is that it's about $20. Then we got Simone Quandrix Prodigy out there. Green and a blue for a legendary creature, human wizard, it's a one-two. Has one and tap, you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Tapped, has four and tap, draw a card. If you control eight or more lands, draw two cards instead. This little lady is out there doing equations, bro. You cannot keep a good person down when they're out there doing equations. This requires mana to activate, but does not require a sacrifice. So you can combine this with Tireless Provisioner and Lotus Cobra and our Bounce Lands. This will give you infinite landfall triggers and the crabs can do their thing. Or maybe you get old Obnixie out there. Obnixless dude, his granddaughter bought him one of those little buttons that you press when you fall and you can't get up, but he's the fallen. It's three black black for a legendary creature demon. It's a three three. Has landfall. Whenever the land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player lose three life and that's going to be your opponents. If you do, you put three plus one plus one counters on this idiot. His spark is lost. He's plotting revenge upon the plane, crumpting mana fractured his soul. This is just another landfall payoff. Better than that though, is the old retreat to Hagra. All right, so if we're using bounce lands and landfall payoffs, we have Kodama of the East Tree. Get on out there, buddy. Four green green for a legendary creature spirit. It's a six six with a reach because of Kodama's reach. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser mana value from your hand onto the battlefield and lands have mana value zero and so do these treasure tokens and little insect tokens that you're making. Also as partner. I love this guy. He's just an anomaly out there. He's making red spores and shooting them all over the land, dude. Make a token with Scoot Swarm or Rampaging Bayloths or Tireless Provisioner. Bounce the land. Kodama will trigger. Put out the bounce land. Rinse and repeat. Spore Mound works as well for this. So let's say our commander gets nuked six times and we're not doing anything. We have alternate uh, pieces for that too with Sakura Tribe Scout, Sky Shroud Ranger. They're pretty sweet animals. These guys are redundant pieces if we can get Retreat to Coral Helm out there or Intruder Alarm and a Bounce Land at hand. Land of War Scout works as well. These scouts, they're scouting out the land, brother. Listen, man, the Ninja Turtles got to retire sometime, and this is Archelos Lagoon Mystic. One black, green, and a blue for a legendary creature. Turtle Shaman's got turtle power. He's a 2-4. As long as he's untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. Another interesting thing you can do with the Bounce Lands is have them enter untapped with Archelos. Tap them in response to their own bounce trigger, add the two colored mana. You can use this to pay for activated abilities on Zimone, or pay for the activation cost for our next couple cards. Man oh man, you got Freed from the Real, you got Pem and Zora. These two cards just go crazy in a deck where you have mana dorks tapping for more than one mana, or if you have all kinds of shenanigans going on. You can untap our commander, we can do all kinds of crazy things. These cards are fantastic, they're broken in the right deck, and this is the deck for them. And you got this creep clouding up your mirror with their garlic breath. Maloku is four and a blue for a legendary creature, Moonfolk Wizard. It's a two four with flying. That's pretty nice. One, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Create a little blue illusion creature token with flying. This is an interesting combo piece that works with lands that enter untapped and either our commander or a creature like Sakura Tribe Scout and retreat to Coral Helm or Intruder Alarm. Look at this one. You got Stone Cedar Hierophant. Two grain green for a creature, human druid. It's a one one with a landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield un under your control, untap this little idiot. As tap, untap target land. Since we're including bounce lands and freed from the reel, we may want to stick this sweet lady in there. Just shedding light on the dang universe. Tap her, untap the bounce land if it's already out there. Untap her with, with one blue mana and generate infinite of whatever else the bounce land taps for. And you got Kelpie Guide, the delicious water horse from Frozen 2. Does the same exact thing. Kelpie Guide is probably a good include even if you aren't comboing out. Now you may not have seen this card before, but the Tiller Engine is an artifact creature for two generic mana. It's a Construct 1-3. Whenever a land enters the battlefield tapped under your control, choose one, untap that land. This is a redundant piece for Archelos, functions the same. This just came out, is already up to five bucks or so. 
and the old Elysian Caryatid is always a good include. You aren't packing a ton of four power plus creatures, but you have enough in there. You also have Sanctum Weaver with either Aura on it, freed from the real or Pemmin's Aura, taps for the requisite two mana and is a real cutie hanging out in the woods too. Zaxara the Exemplary is another two mana mana dork. It's one black, green, and blue for a legendary creature Nightmare Hydra. It's 2 3 with Death Touch. Has tap, add two mana of any one color. Don't worry too much about that third ability, but there are some really good X spells you can use to capitalize on all that mana and close out the game anyway. If you want to be a cheeky monster, Villainous Wealth is a great card. Just be careful. If the targeted player exits the game, you lose all their stuff. And you get the old standby as Exsanguinate, Torment of Hailfire. They're going to do the job, but they're a little boring out there. Don't get me wrong. I've used them before. I have them in a couple decks, including my Zaxara deck. But it's a salt-inducing play. Oh, and one more crab, dude. If you have bounce lands exiting and entering the battlefield, we have another crab, but it's a snake, dude. But you know what? It's 2023. If you're a snake and you want to be a crab, you can be. Alter of the Brood. It's one generic mana for an artifact. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills a card. One last time, I'm going to plug Pattern of Rebirth as well, especially when our commander is a sacrifice outlet. And there are also an amazing amount of combos you can accomplish with Protean Hulk to get where you need to go. Our commander is a huge sacrifice outlet, so getting the Hulk out there will help us get whatever missing pieces of our combo that we need. There are a bunch of other combo lines that you can include in a deck like this, but they're not centered around our commander. You gotta have a deck like this. Once in a while, you bust it out for spicier games. In these colors, you can back up your combos with counter magic. You can use more expensive tutors to keep your combos going. I just talked about approximately 40 cards. So basically just get your transmute guys in there. You get some backup counter spells. You get some uh, targeted removal, some board wipes, some ramp, and you're good to go, dude. Overall, very interesting commander you can center your combos around. This deck wants to draw cards, play lands, and that's commander, dude. Thanks for joining me. And I'll tell you one thing my parents always told me, keep your pants on.